After all, a bride is someone else's, so it's a waste to serve expensive coffee to someone like you. We'll have it ourselves. With that, my mother-in-law grinned. I see, well, it can't be helped. This is a game. It's a doubles match, with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law as one pair and us as the other. There's a strategy to the game. Well, just watch. So I put on a big smile and said, I'm excited. My name is Mia. I'm a 32-year-old part-time housewife. I've been married to my husband Carter for five years. Finally, the day came to build our own home. Since we got married, building a house has been our goal, and we've been working hard together. We looked at various houses and carefully considered what we wanted, while working hard to save money. When we were two years into our marriage, we were blessed with a child, which caused some setbacks in our plans. But my husband and I didn't give up, and we worked together to reach our goal. However, when it came time to actually build the house, it was more difficult than I had imagined. A house is a big purchase after all. You can't just buy another one if you make a mistake. It's not that easy. We had to consider things like transportation, convenience for shopping, a child-friendly environment, and the reputation of the elementary school district. We also had to consider if it would be easy for my husband, who is a full-time employee, to commute to work. There were so many things we had to research, and just looking for land was a struggle in itself. In the end, we settled near my husband's parents' house. It's not like we chose to live nearby because we liked it here. It's because the location was good. It's not like we're living together, so we decided we'll have to put up with some things. Once we found the land, it was time to order the house. But that was difficult too. There were a lot of problems to deal with, especially the budget, in order to build the ideal home we have been thinking about for so long. We managed to move forward step by step. However, there were complicating factors, namely my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, Isabella. For some reason, these two kept interfering and giving their opinions. When we said we were going to build a house, they suddenly became very interested. My mother-in-law's eyes lit up, and my single sister-in-law, who was in her late 20s, was eager as well. Where are you going to build it? Which construction company are you going to use? What kind of interior are you going to have? She kept asking all kinds of questions. I tried to brush her off with vague answers, but then she started showing up uninvited to meetings with a construction company and architect. I wonder where she heard about them. As I muttered to myself, my husband apologized. Sorry, I talked about it with her. My husband was the culprit. Even if I glared at him and asked what he was thinking, it was too late. Oh, don't you think the kitchen storage is too small? My mother-in-law chimed in, and then Isabella added, A wood deck is a must-have, right? Someone please sue these two's mouths shut. If you're going to have a barbecue in the garden, it's better to have a large sink. A walk-in closet should be bigger. As for the windows, we should consider soundproofing and use double panes. We should also have a room that's suitable for your parents' needs, right? And don't you need a room for Isabella to stay in too? Oh my gosh, wait a second. Why do we need a room for your parents? And what do you mean by a room for your sister to stay in? With the architect giving a wry smile and my husband and I pushed to the side, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law kept sticking their noses in. After the two of them left, I asked my husband to confirm. I had a bad feeling, although I didn't want to think that way. Hey, you're not planning on living with them, are you? The way they were talking made me suspect that they were planning something like that. I asked my husband hesitantly and he shook his head in a panic. Oh, I don't think my dad would ever consider leaving the house he's grown accustomed to living in. And Isabella is already an adult. Even if something happened to their home, it's impossible for her to come live with us. Yeah, you're right. Carter denied it, but my anxiety didn't go away. We somehow managed to ignore the interference of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, and the design of the house was decided. 
and construction began. And one year later, our long cherished dream home was finally completed. It was tough, it was long, and oh, it was tedious. As I lay down on the sofa in the living room after the move, I closed my eyes and recalled all the hardships we had faced. Looking at various properties was a good learning experience and was quite interesting. Hey mom, is it okay if I put my cup here? Sure, why not? Then let's put mine and Isabella's stuff in this corner of the cupboard. At times, the comments of the architect made me realize the difference between my ideal home and the reality, which was a bit discouraging. The upstairs room should have good sunlight, right? Can I have the biggest room? Yeah, I don't want a small room either because of my age, so I'll take that. I really wanted to plant a hydrangea tree in the yard, but I never thought I'd have to research the type of soil. Okay, I'll call the moving company. Please, Isabella, you're so reliable. What's with these people moving around in my house? Mother-in-law and Isabella, why are you touching and moving things around in the house without permission? Huh? We're just moving things around to make it more livable. My sister-in-law nonchalantly answered my question. My clothes, which I haven't taken out of the box yet, were pushed into a corner while my sister-in-law's clothes were mysteriously being put in the closet. My mother-in-law also. The new house is nice, isn't it? It's so exciting. She said that as she made tea and started munching on chips without asking. Oh no, there are crumbs on the floor. Hey, please don't do anything without permission. This is our house, you know. I shouted anxiously at the two of them, who acted as if they were going to live here from now on. But then, at that moment, the atmosphere changed. What are you talking about? My sister-in-law said. Huh? I tilted my head, and my sister-in-law pointed a finger at me and said, My brother built this house, you know. My mother-in-law nodded in agreement with those words. That's right. Since it's a house that my son built, what's the problem with parents and siblings living in it? That's a big problem, though. It's something I've been worried about even before we built the house. My blood runs cold at the thought of it actually becoming a reality. I can't believe it. But these two? Well then, in that case, Isabella and I will use the large room on the second floor. Is it okay if Carter's room is next to it? No, that's a big problem. The large room is for my husband and me, and the one next to it is for our son. What are you talking about? My son and grandson could share the same room. What is my mother-in-law saying? No, no, it's too small to make it a room for my husband, myself, and our son. If it's just my son and grandson, it should be manageable, right? But I'm here too, you know. What are you talking about? At that moment, my mother-in-law gave a sudden unpleasant smile and looked at me. And then, This house was built by my son, who has a blood relation to me. Therefore, it's only the blood relatives who have the right to live here. As for you, who have no blood relation, you're just a stranger. You can sleep on that sofa over there. That's what my mother-in-law said as she pointed at the sofa. No way, you're kidding me. These two, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, seem to be serious about living in this house. Our precious home is going to be taken over by this alien parent-child duo. In distress, I consulted with my husband that night. Although the two of them haven't stayed over yet, they were talking about moving in soon, mentioning something about a moving company. So they might actually start living here in the near future. Hey, are you seriously considering giving up the big room to those two? No way, I wouldn't do that. When I told my husband what had happened today, he frowned. But they're talking about turning our room into your mother-in-law's and Isabella's room. Hmm, that's a little too much. My husband looked troubled and tilted his head, but he talked to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law the next day. And I thought they understood, but... Huh? Mother-in-law, what are you doing? What does it look like? We're moving! She didn't understand at all. When my son was at daycare and my husband was at work, my mother-in-law and movers came to our house. Before I knew it, the movers were bringing in boxes and furniture. 
What do you mean moving? Honestly, you're such an inflexible daughter-in-law. Why should we have to put up with a small room? You're such an ungrateful child. You're just a stranger after all. Did you not hear anything from your son? Of course, he said the big room was a no-go. Hey, the conversation got narrower, didn't it? I mean, they can't even live in this house to begin with. While I was still in shock, all the items were brought in. The place where my son's room was supposed to be was now occupied by a large number of boxes, and my sister-in-law Isabella came in. Wow, this room is really small. Isabella, what in the world is going on here? Oh, Mia, I'm glad to see you today. Let's celebrate our first day in this new house with some steaks, shall we? What? No! Without even listening to me, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law disappeared into the room and slammed the door shut. Ugh. Thanks to the surprise attack by my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, our new home had fallen into enemy hands. In no time, we had started living together with the occupying forces. I'm not really comfortable with being solely responsible for cleaning, laundry, and cooking. And it doesn't feel great to have our things used without our permission. However, even though we were living together, I couldn't exactly tell them not to use our things. As I was thinking this, my sister-in-law brought out a wine bottle. It's something I bought because I wanted to drink it, I said. But before I could even finish, she had already drunk it all in no time. As I sighed, I saw my mother-in-law using my expensive facial lotion excessively in the corner of my eye. That's an expensive one! It seemed like they had ordered steak, but of course, I was the one who had to pay for it. I quickly prepared it, but I couldn't even have a single slice. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law take baths before my husband, my son, and me. On top of that, they leave the shower running while they take a bath. They don't contribute to the utility bills. They watch TV at high volume until late at night. The house is always messy and dirty. My motto is always to stay positive, but gradually the absurdity of the situation has become amusing to me. So I have decided to just enjoy it. This is a game of entertaining my mother-in-law and sister-in-law to the fullest. I've heard that irritation is the skin's worst enemy. Now let the hospitality tournament begin. On a certain day off, during the daytime when my husband and child were also at home, my sister-in-law woke up scratching her head. Good morning, good morning. Without even hearing the voice in my heart, my sister-in-law sat down at the dining table and... Ah, I'm so sleepy. Didn't get enough sleep. Do you have any coffee? She looked at me and asked, sleeping until noon and still feeling tired. Then similarly, the slow-to-rise mother-in-law got up, and the same thing happened. Hey, Mia, could you make some coffee for us? Upon hearing this, I stood up. This is a game. A game! If I can impress these two, then I win. While thinking that, I opened the cabinet with coffee inside. Let's see, I think I bought some new instant coffee yesterday. It was a slightly more expensive instant coffee than usual. I was excited. I showed it with a smug look, but tilted my head at the two dismayed faces. Huh? You don't like this one? Then my sister-in-law stood up and started rummaging through the shelves. And then, oh, here it is, she said, taking out some coffee beans. Oh, my husband got these as a souvenir from his boss. They were high quality coffee beans. We can't make use of whole coffee beans in our home, so they've been lying around unused. My sister-in-law misunderstood my expression and smirked. What's this? Keeping such good beans hidden away? Your personality is really bad, Mia. Huh? My mother-in-law nodded at my sister-in-law's words. Yeah, that's right. It's a shame to waste delicious coffee on us. Who are blood relatives, isn't it? You really are an outsider. It's such a waste to give this premium coffee to someone like you who's just a stranger. Huh? We'll drink this fine coffee you gave us. Instant coffee is good enough for you, stranger. My mother-in-law laughed. Hmm, I don't understand the conversation, but there's no interpreter here. 
I was wondering what to do with the coffee beans, so I'm actually grateful that they're willing to consume them. Looking at my husband and seeing him nod, I said, It's fine, I'm happy to do it, and then chuckled twice. They probably didn't expect that kind of response from me. Huh? My mother-in-law was surprised. Ignoring their comments, I received the coffee beans from my sister-in-law. Well then, I'll make some delicious coffee now. Huh? Uh, okay, sure, go ahead. My sister-in-law seemed bewildered by my smiling face. Rolling up my sleeves in front of her, I was fully motivated and determined. Alright, let the game begin. I'll make some delicious coffee. However, as I opened the bag and looked at the beans in front of me, I felt a bit puzzled. I'll call my worried-looking husband over here and ask for his advice. I beckoned, and my husband came trotting over. What's wrong? Hey, what do you do with the coffee beans? Actually, I've never made coffee from beans. So I asked my husband. Yeah, I don't know either. And there I was, stuck. Oh no, we're in trouble. We've stumbled at the first hurdle of the game to make the best coffee ever. Should I look it up online? No, that's like looking at a strategy guide. It's a last resort. So what should we do? We have to make the best with what little knowledge we have, right? I think you have to grind them into powder. Well, I can see that. But we don't have a grinder or a blender, do we? Where's the mortar? It got lost during the move. After thinking it over again, Carter suggested. Why don't we just use the bean as they are? I strongly agreed with my husband's idea. So let's give it a try. I set the beans in the coffee server without grinding them. And then I put the paper filter in. All right, let's pour hot water over here. Oh, it's coming out. Look, Mia, it has some color. That's right, that means it's a success. I noticed that the color was really light, but I thought that must be the color of high quality coffee. Feeling encouraged, we continued pouring hot water while giggling. It's done, we did it. We have made the high quality coffee. I proudly presented it to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. However, they both let out a deep sigh looking at us. You finally did it. How long did it take you two? Goodness, what a waste of time because of someone else's daughter-in-law. Huh? It's so light! While grinning, my mother-in-law criticizes me and then screams at the sight of the coffee. Huh? It's too light in color. What is this? My sister-in-law also frowns at the coffee that has been served. In response, my husband and I shake our heads in disbelief. This is a truly premium coffee made from premium beans. The reason it's light in color is probably because it's high quality. If you need milk or sugar, we have them, but please try it straight first, I said with a smile. I pushed the cups towards the two of them. But wait! Please, go ahead. Hey, big brother, is this really premium coffee? Yeah, Mia and I made it ourselves. It's the highest quality. Try it. Both of them were nervously persuaded by not only me, but also my husband, and took a sip of the coffee. Immediately after, It's weak! It's disgusting! My mother-in-law and sister-in-law chimed in perfectly. What is this? This isn't coffee at all! What is this? It's definitely weird! Hey Mia, how did you make this coffee? Huh? I just poured water over the beans. What? Huh? Was there something wrong after all? I looked at my husband's face, but he just shrugged his shoulders. That's strange. I just made it normally. Was it too high quality for your taste? What? I'm a woman who suits high quality things. It's this coffee that's weird. Oh, I see. Well, please drink it all then. No, but... Here you go, please. Wait a minute. If she suits high quality things, she should get used to it as she drinks it. So there was only one thing to do. I forcefully pressed the coffee cup to my sister-in-law's lips and made her drink it. By the way, my husband encouraged my mother-in-law to drink more, calling it filial piety. Well, as it turned out, it became quite enjoyable.
Daily games have become more fun. Emma, shall I clean the room? Hey, at least knock. Oh, sorry about that. You always come into our room without knocking. I thought it wasn't necessary. Isabella, I think everything on the floor is garbage. Shall I throw it all away? Oh my god, that's a premium bag! Mother-in-law, you mentioned yesterday that the seasoning was too light, so I made it a bit stronger today. What? It's too spicy. This isn't strong, it's just spicy. My mouth is on fire. Isabella, I see that you like the toner I have, but I have something even better for your skin. It has a unique smell, but it's really good for your skin. It stinks! What is this? Don't just put it on my face without permission. As the game of pleasing them both becomes more and more fun, I ramp up my service spirit and entertain them more and more. Since both of them are crying tears of joy, I am the winner. Although my husband also tries his best, I have the advantage since I spend more time with the two of them. While I was doing all that one day, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law disappeared. Huh? And then I got a call from my father-in-law. Come to think of it, my father-in-law was left at the family home. I wonder how he's been doing all this time. Maybe he's been able to enjoy a carefree life on his own. According to my father-in-law, My wife and Isabella came back crying. What happened? My wife's lips turned red and swollen. And Isabella's skin is glossy but has a strong smell. That's what he said. I wonder if they were so happy that they cried and even gave my father-in-law a progress report. But I don't want them to think it's over yet. We have plans for a barbecue in the yard tonight. I'm going to pick up my mother-in-law and sister-in-law now because I've arranged for them to enjoy themselves by doing the limbo dance next to me. I told them that I was going to pick them up at their house. For some reason, the two of them started to panic and we began a game of chase. In the end, my elderly mother-in-law was easily caught by me and my sister-in-law turned the chase into a game of hide and seek. I already knew all the hiding spots from our child. My husband said that, and Emma was eventually found saying, Enough! Enough! Please stop! You don't have to hold back from crying tears of joy like that. A few days later, suddenly the moving company arrived and carried out my mother-in-law and sister-in-law's belongings. What? Why? I was going to offer more hospitality. When I asked the two of them, who were hiding behind my father-in-law, they just shook their heads vigorously and looked pale. When I looked at my husband, he also had a really disappointed expression. Hey, you know, it seems like your mom and sister weren't satisfied with our hospitality. Is that so? I'll have to research more. Hearing that conversation, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law shivered in fear. Afterwards, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law stopped coming over to our house. On the contrary, even though they live nearby and we often run into each other, when I greet them with a hello, they run away within seconds. Oh well, I guess it's fine. With the two of them gone, peaceful days returned. We successfully redecorated their room and turned it into our son's room. We even started talking about having another child. After finishing the game and feeling a little unsatisfied, I suddenly noticed the faint shadow of my father-in-law standing beside me. Real naturals don't think they're natural, do they? I chuckled and said, <laughs> Thank you for watching until the end.